Hey everyone, we're gonna go ahead and get started here. I wanted to welcome you all to our Hitchhikers exclusive webinar, Increase Efficiency with the new Yex Navigation. Uh, this is our first webinar where we do a deep dive on some of the recent spring release features. Really excited to talk about this feature with you here. Obviously the new navigation is going to change the way everyone sees the platform. And we're gonna go through a couple of features as well. Uh, I wanted to introduce our, our co-hosts here. We've got Curtis Marr and Aaron Fifner to, to highlight from the product marketing side and from the product design side. So they're really going to get into the details of why we created this, this new nav update and, and what are some of the best ways to navigate the platform. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Curtis to kick us off. Thanks, Nick. Hey, everybody. Um, really excited for this opportunity to chat with you all. Um, so as far as an agenda goes, we're going to get started with a quick preview of the spring 22 platform enhancements. Then Aaron is going to take us behind the scenes with a deep dive into the design theory and decision making that contributed to the redesign. After that, I'll take us into a live demo to actually show you the new look and feel of the platform. Then we'll finish things up with some time for questions. So. As I said, we are so excited for the chance this morning to discuss the enhancements made to our platform coming with the spring 22 release. Before we jump into some of the design fundamentals that brought us to where we are today, I want to quickly share a preview of some of the things that are new with this release. With our redesign, we completely revamped how users interface with the platform with the introduction of our left hand navigation. Our new navigation was built to give our users the flexibility and, convenient, and convenience they need to be successful working in Yext. Alongside access to our entire product suite, our new navigation includes two updated productivity features, favorites and quick find. Altogether, these enhancements make it easier than ever for our users to find what they need and carry out their day-to-day -day actions in Yext. But we didn't stop there with our redesign. Also part of this spring's release, we've added a new built-in home screen fit to better serve the needs of our users. Here, users can find quick access to things like account metrics, suggested actions, hitchhiker, hitchhiker's content, and more. And this was built with every user in mind, regardless of which products they use. Plus, users still have the option to configure their own home screen that's customized to fit their specific needs and preferences. Now, I'm gonna pass it over to Aaron to tell us a little bit more about how this all came to be. Curtis, yeah, first let me say it's really an honor to be the one that's sharing this journey for you and be the face of this, but it's the hard work and collaboration of many, many members of the product and engineering community here at Yex that made this possible uh, for this big change to the platform. Um, we'll go to the next slide. Uh, me and my team of designers take the you and user experience very seriously. This quote uh, by a fellow software designer and programmer really speaks to our mission as guardians of the overall product experience and what we're aiming for every time we make designs for Yex. We want to make sure that we are respecting your time as a busy professional, and we want to be generous with how we are helping you uh, navigate what Yex does and brings value to your day-to-day -day work. So before last week's spring early access, this is what the navigation looks like, and some of you may still be using this version. You can easily try out the new navigation between now and the general access period on May 11th when it will make its broad debut. Um, there is a feature flag that should be appropriately named for the new navigation for spring 22. That's how you can find it in the platform. Um, so you can see the current navigation has been on the platform, uh, believe it or not, for about 10 years now, which is a long time in technology years. Um, and Yext has evolved since then. You can see that the navigation architecture is structured to treat each product area separately. And some of those product areas like answers and pages didn't even exist 10 years ago. So this is how we um, kind of got into this place where it was a, uh, an impetus to change the navigation. And you can also see that some of the submenu menu 
um, items. I know that this is not an interactive graphic, but when you play with it, the, the sub menu kind of flashes every time you hover on each area and then sticks on the last one hovered, even when you move your cursor away. So you could find yourself clicked into knowledge graph as you see here, but the reviews sub menu might be displaying down below it, which is not great. Um, also, that quick flashing is not really great for discoverability. When we showed the new navigation to some users, there were some sub items that were always there. Uh, and in this version, um, they didn't ever really see them because of all of the flashing. So um, also the other thing for this navigation, only one section can be open at, at a time in this paradigm. Uh, which means that there's a, what's called a higher interaction cost. That's the total number of interaction efforts that it takes to complete a goal. So to jump between your entities and knowledge graph and say answers or listing screens, that was very difficult in this navigation. Beyond that, the aesthetics blend um, into the important, uh, the content of the rest of the page. And for a navigation to be a real utility tool to help you uh, move around through all of the valuable parts of Yext, uh, it just wasn't standing out in an easy place to kind of like home base back to when the aesthetics are, are so in, um, blended in. And then the utility area over on that right, while it's in a familiar position that you may recognize from other software, uh, it just really had a lot more, we could, we could make it more robust. So on to the next one. For those of you who've ever been through a web uh, site redesign, you know that um, redoing the navigation can be a beast. There's a lot of complex things to consider, a lot of uh, different variations. The architecture uh, is, is definitely a big part of what we do. So making this change was weighted carefully at Yext, but we had four main guiding principles that led us to this and other upcoming changes in our interface. This is just the first of a few that are uh, coming up. So the first one is that change is inevitable. Other technology is shaping how you expect software to work and we need to keep up with that. Um, Usability is also top of mind. We need to uh, make that and continue to strive to make that a priority. And for some of the reasons I listed before on the uh, slide with the current uh, navigation, um, we saw an opportunity to really optimize there. As well, uh, Yext is growing. We're bringing new features online and we need to make sure that the navigation can um, support that kind of growth. Horizontal and stack navigation is great for simple web interfaces, but um, Yext's complexity and interdependency between all of our products is really taking on a new shape. Uh, and we wanna make sure that the navigation can provide a very friction-free experience for that. And so the next place we started, and go to the next slide, is as any good UX uh, team would do, we began with research, but not just any research. We know that we're not the first ones to go through a navigation redesign. So there's no sense in starting from scratch and building from the ground up, although we did do some pretty wild explorations just to make sure we were vetting all options. We looked to common navigation patterns. There's a lot of expert research out there uh, and laws of UX that we wanted to make sure that we were um, following and playing into. Uh, so we looked at Nielsen Norman Group, UX Pin, Smashing Magazine, and then also uh, the laws of uh, UX here by uh, John. And then we looked to leading enterprise SaaS tools. So uh, to make sure that these influences that you're having in other technology that are using you're using in your daily workplace we want it to be familiar that it has a lot to do with removing the friction in finding things if you are familiar with the paradigms and we don't have to reteach you all over again so these are just a smattering of the examples that we looked at most of them uh, you should recognize on there if you go to the next uh, slide So of the common navigation patterns, I've listed uh, a number of them on the side that we explored. We looked at um, maybe sticking with the horizontal bar option, but are there ways that we could re reconfigure it to accomplish those four goals uh, that we had at the beginning? We also looked at um, uh, the vertical sidebar to see if that would be an option. We looked at tabs, that's another option. So kind of like a horizontal, but pulling it apart and having like a local uh, page navigation that you have down below and then tabbing the content uh, that tethers to the one that's at the top. 
We also looked at breadcrumb based navigation just to see if that could be helpful to simplify things, but also kind of nest uh, things behind a breadcrumb and really kind of play out the hierarchy uh, of how things are related to one another. We looked at the hamburger menu. Uh, it is a goal of ours to become a responsive tool as everybody is becoming busy in their lives. Having a mobile option is on our uh, horizon. And so we wanted to look at the hamburger menu. This is something you see in a lot of uh, you know, uh, software tools that they've been playing with too. And then the last one was looking at flyouts. Uh, this is a great way to kind of nest menu items as well. Uh, so this is where we did some exploration to see how those map back to our goals as well. These are some of the models and screenshots that we took uh, from the earlier slide of enterprise SaaS platforms. You can see here um, on the kind of from right to left, there's a variety of exploration between uh, if there's a navigation panel with icons that opens up another panel. Um, you can see some foldering. You can see different applications of icons versus um, accordion foldering. Where do you put the you know accordion toggle? Is it on the left or on the right? Um, how do you treat like double panels opening up? If there's a folder structure, how much do you nest? Um, what's the white space looking like? We studied a lot of these models just to kind of see how they map back to what Yext needs and what we want to present to you, which helped us pick a direction. The uh, vertical navigation has a lot of benefits. Um, and let me walk through some of those right now. Uh, the first one is um, learnability. So learnability is defined as how easy it is for users to accomplish basic tasks the first time they encounter the design. This is a familiar paradigm that you're seeing in a lot of the SaaS um, platforms that you are probably using today. And so we wanted to play off of that. Vertical navigation um, requires very little orientation uh, to acquaint you to the functionality. The next thing is findability. So uh, making sure I mentioned interaction cost before, usability can be measured by the interaction cost. Um, and so using a vertical navigation removes the visual design constraints that limit the number of choices, which is also another piece of um, a UX law to help users get to uh, the task more quickly. Um, so we also, the, the benefit of having a uh, vertical navigation is it simultaneously exposes specific, very high information sent categories without requiring users to dig into the second tier of hierarchy. So if done right, users can also have multiple categories open at once. This was a really big benefit to us, especially with the cross-pollination of a lot of the different product areas that users, when we studied their behavior patterns in our navigation have, that maybe some of these other SaaS tools don't. So we, we kind of had a unique challenge to solve for in that way. The next one is to kind of position us for growth. Um, this uh, is a very notorious navigation pattern, um, especially in studies by Nielsen Norman Group, that vertical navigation is an excellent choice for interfaces where the navigation is really likely to expand in the future. Um, adding additional categories or reconfiguring the hierarchy in a vertical navigation doesn't require a major redesign every time. Um, and the only major decision is how these items should be blended into the existing category structure. So this offered us a lot of growth. The next thing is uh, noticeability. I mentioned a lot about the aesthetics blending in and wanting to make sure that this is a, a hub and kind of home base to be able to kind of uh, work your way through the platform. Um, we know from eye tracking studies that attention leans to the left on websites and users look at the left half of the screen about 80% of the time. And we wanted to respect that. That's why we have a, a you'll see a collapse feature. So we don't want to take away from the content necessarily and still use that left uh, side of the screen for when we have content heavy pages, but the navigation should be a very accessible and noticeable part of that screen. And the real estate on the left side of the screen is valuable. So placing the navigation there makes it likely to be noticed and scanned. Speaking of scanning, uh, research in psycholinguistics, that's a very um, big word and hard to spell, uh, but it shows that the visual search in a list is more efficient if the list is presented vertically rather than horizontally when we're reading. Um, and you wanna make sure that people are able to find an item of interest with fewer eye fixations to dart and, and move. Uh, having them lined up makes it a lot easier. Um, more information can be delivered in a singular linear fixation 
in that way. So that's one of the other reasons why vertical was great for us. The next one I mentioned that uh, mobile is on our horizon. While our platform is far from being completely mobile today, only 6% of our traffic really comes from mobile devices. A fully responsive platform interface is a future goal um, as our lives get busier and on the go usage of SaaS tools is on the rise. So a vertical navigation for desktop and mobile allows the team uh, to apply the same visual design choices with rel relatively minimal uh, adaptation um, along the way. So this will help us on our journey there. And the only drawback uh, that we saw, which was enough to kind of keep us pushing through with all these positives, uh, this one kind of out, uh, was outweighed by the benefits, is that the vertical navigation compared to a horizontal navigation does take up more space, space and there's less room available for content. Um, you'll see that vertical navigation usually results in pages with a lower content to Chrome ratio, which is why we kind of introduced a um, collapse option um, that you'll notice when uh, Curtis goes into play for it or play with it. So this is where we kind of iterated uh, and we started making some decisions. This is all of the kind of behind the scenes early versions of our navigation. We started playing with um, the foldering structure. We started playing with having the two levels. So an icon uh, way of selecting each product area that opened up different flyout menus. We started playing with color and contrast and um, different ways of pushing and pulling the eye. We started playing with uh, nested tabs at the top and we got a little complex and had to like pull ourselves back. Um, and we started playing with a full black uh, panel on the side and different hover states. And you can see on the very far right, some uh, a collapse state. We played with where that utility area, how we can boost that up opportunity kind of nestled down at the bottom. That was a common pattern that we were seeing. We played also with um, pulling in quick find uh, into the navigation and really bringing that utility uh, to the forefront of, of the users in the navigation. Let's go to the next one. And these are some of the decisions that we etched in stone uh, that I think were our guides, you know, um, helpful in, along the way. So we realized that our YEX product icons aren't um, universally uh, understood. And so they required some labels. So any design that had just the icons as the way of navigating and jumping between each product area was probably not gonna work. So we needed to figure something out there. Uh, we did see that it was better to stick with one connected panel um, instead of having like a double panel uh, open uh, along the way. It was just was a little too much complex interaction. We also noticed that a lot of uh, positive reactions centered around the darker interface. Um, and there's a lot of research uh, that Nielsen Norman was um, adding to the, the favor of having a darker navigation for noticeability and for contrast of what is content and what is navigation. Um, we also wanted to simplify the number of choices in some of our models. And even as we started applying our own information architecture and testing that with customers, the name of the game was to how do we make this simple, simple for you to find what you need. Uh, so that's maybe where the favorites and the quick find and also just sort of what belongs in the navigation architecture uh, came into play. Also, we want to introduce the branding colors. We, um, you are all exposed to marketing material before signing up for Yext, and the color palette of our platform was a little out of sync with what some of those marketing materials have gone through in updates during that 10-year period. And so this is the first step in bringing some of that marketing um, visual language into the platform. There will be more to come, but this is the first step in that direction. Um, and we really realized that bringing the branding colors is bigger deal than just the nav. So we stuck with mostly grays, although you saw us in some of the screens before then playing with some of our uh, colors that are uh, aligned with each product area. Um, so we'll do more exploration there in the future. We did uh, want to make sure that we are working as a company to become an accessible tool. And so there's a big initiative for becoming WCAG compliant and the nav was um, a great opportunity to launch with having that compliance uh, right out of the gate. 
And then we also wanted to make the quick find feature really highly visible in the navigation. It's in the platform today, but it's barely noticed. Um, and it's a really great uh, life hack to make the um, your navigation a lot easier. So we wanted to give that prominence in what we were designing. And then we also wanted to have that separate area for utilities. So then we define the anatomy. Um, what you'll see right now is that we have a main navigation panel and a level two navigation panel. Uh, you'll also see that we have some tiering of some of the sections of content in there. This plan and this path is maybe not our ideal state. What we're looking to do is again, simplify, but we wanted to not have too much um, unfamiliarity with the architecture that you might be used to today. So this is a step, an interim step uh, that we're going to launch with right now and eventually evolve uh, into having one nav panel. But for uh, right now, the launch will have two layers of navigation um, where you have access to your home screen up at the left hand uh, corner with the icon there. That's a really quick way to get back uh, to the first page that you land on. Um, you've got quick find right there at the top. Each section header should be pretty obvious. Uh, and then all of the section links down below that bottom bar is your utility. Um, and you're able to kind of transition over to that level two navigation whenever there's um, an arrow kind of pointing over to the to the right hand side. So this is a pretty standard UX process, but wanted to not shortchange the volume of work and effort that went into it. Uh, so we did a lot of working prototypes. We put things in code and you know hooked up all the functionality and played with it. There's only so much you can do in static screens, and we wanted to like really work with something malleable and test it. Um, speaking of testing, we have an internal testing community. We call them the Champagne Tasters. Uh, they are often people who administer the X platform on behalf of our customers. And um, they gave us great feedback uh, as well as additional customers. We went to our mid-market uh, tier enterprise and also partner uh, customers to really understand what their initial reactions were, what areas we had for improvement and we'll continue to do testing. Uh, so if that's something that you're interested in partnering with us on, I'm sure we can get you some information on how to do that in the future. Uh, we definitely wanna build a cohort of uh, people who give us that critical feedback along the way. And then based on that learning, we refined uh, and went back through it. So these are some of the iterations we went through. You can kind of see that, that color transformation from what was in the platform to now some of the branding colors. We played a lot with spacing, with hover states, with positioning of icons. Uh, when we turn things on, having multiple sections open at a time um, and everything in between. This is just a, a smattering and kind of, kind of the journey that we went through until we were uh, proud of what the results are. And that's where we are today. So Curtis, do you want to take it away? I would love to. Uh, thank you so much for, for that, Aaron. That was super interesting. Yeah. Um, and so as we teased at the beginning, let's, let's take a look at this plot. Let's take a look at the platform uh, with a little live demo. Um, so I will continue to share my screen. Um, wonderful. So, before we get started, I do just want to quickly call out. Um, so I am showing you all a demo account. So certain things in this account, like analytics data or the search experiences you'll see, they won't be totally as polished or complete as they would with one of our actual customers. Um, that said, it, it, it will be entirely representative enough for the sake of this demo. Um, so did just want to say that on the onset of the demo. Um, but with all, that all said, um, I'm really excited to finally show you this redesign live in the platform. So upon logging in, our users will immediately see the modernized left nav Aaron was talking about. This appears in black for improved contrast, and it can be collapsed and expanded again uh, based on user preference. So imagine, for instance, you're working in, say, Report Builder, looking at answers data. Um, here, being able to expand and collapse the navigation is actually really valuable. It means that it's easier to see the data, to visualize the data, and ultimately focus on the task at hand. Um, looking back within the navigation bar, users can see that their Yex products um, are also able to be clicked to expanded um, so they can navigate within each of these features. 
It's important to note that these collapsible, collapsible groups stay open while switching between tasks. Um, this makes it really easy for our users to navigate between and within product features while carrying out their day-to-day -day actions in the platform. Also, taking a look at these features within the navigation, you'll notice that you can click a star at the right of the title to favorite a page. So for instance, here I can favorite our entities page, save it there. And now you see we have it added to our favorites bar. Um, so let's say as an example, you're working building an answers experience, and you realize that you need to add a custom field that you want to have be searchable in that experience. Um, instead of having to click all the way through the interface, because you set up your favorites bar accordingly, you can click on the configuration for fields and quickly make that new field type. And you can be right back on your way building an awesome answers experience. Um, we're really excited about how the, answer, the favorites bar turned out because ultimately what it means is our users are going to save time having an organized list of pages that they use the most right available at the top of the navigation so they can quickly and seamlessly move between tasks in Yext. And not only is it now easier to navigate favorited pages, but with our upgraded quick find feature, it's even easier to find anything you need in the platform just by searching for it. Say for instance, uh, you know you have an entity about something like corporate bonds that needs to be updated. And as I mentioned, this is a financial services demo account after all. Um, by clicking into the search bar or just by pressing command K, you can access the search modal and enter your search immediately. So here I'll just type in corporate bonds. And what we're going to see is a list of the relevant entities. Um, and so I can click into this one and proceed to make my change. I'm not going to make any change. I think this looks pretty good as it is, but just for the sake of uh, visualization. Um, but it's also important to know that the quick find functionality goes far beyond entities. You can actually Search throughout the platform for any page you want to access. Um, for instance, let's say you're working on that, that answers experience that we were talking about before. Um, but while you're doing this, you, you realize that you actually haven't looked at your competitive intelligence tools for a while. And so it's something that you should do while you're working in the platform. What you can do with quick find search um, is just quickly you know, type in a search for, say, search tracker. Um, and you'd be able to navigate there. But you know, given that you're actively working on an answers func feature, um, you know, maybe you don't want to immediately look at competitive intelligence, but you just want to make sure that you do by the end of the day. Something that's great for an added flexibility for our users is the ability to press command click or command enter to open this in a new tab. And now whenever, re whenever they're ready, our users can go quickly take a look and then close back out and return to their business. So with these together, um, we're just really excited about both favorites and quick find because of how they're gonna help our users find what they need quickly instead of, instead of needing to click through an interface every time they're trying to find something. So lastly, with our demo today, uh, I just wanna spend some time looking at the new built-in home screen that will be greeting users when they log in. So, you know, the knowledge graph has always been the foundation of our platform. Um, but for some first-time user, users, they might have found it confusing as the first thing they see when they enter Yext. And because of that, with this release, we added built-in home screens for users who just want to get a quick snapshot of their account upon logging in. Now users will have immediate access to a wide range of data, links, and suggested actions. So you can see here, we have metrics on entities in the account, searches, publishers that are active, um, as well as some suggested actions like doing training the models of your answers experience or, or building a connector. Um, this is also met with uh, areas to click for support or training modules to learn more about how to get the most out of Yext. Um, 
So ultimately the goal here is that our built-in home screen will be able to support all users from those who are you know, first logging in uh, to those who've been with us for years. So you know, over time, if users want to customize the home screen, that's totally fine too. Um, users have the option to create personalized home screens with metrics, links, and resources that matter most to them. Um, so we are so excited by our team's progress in optimizing the platform for all our users. Um, and we really can't wait for you all to log in, get active, and let us know what you think. Um, so with that, uh, I'm going to pass it back to Aaron for some kind of final remarks on, on this design, and then we'll save a little time for Q&A together. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I did want to mention that um, what we were showing in the platform is definitely um, the first of a many uh, iterations that we're going through um, just to make sure that we're bringing our interface into uh, your expectations and making it continually easy to use. Um, the navigation inherently cascades a number of changes that are going to be in the content screens. Um, and we wanna really prioritize and optimize there. So that's kind of where we're gonna turn our attentions next, as well as um, migrating and making some uh, enhancements to the navigation once we start to see how everybody's using it and uh, receiving some of those ideas from the ideas board, which Curtis will mention uh, in a little bit. But one of the other things is we're, we recognize that these kind of interface changes are not small uh, and in your world. And we want to make sure that we're being respectful in how we're rolling, rolling these communications out uh, to you. We want to reduce the friction. It's normal for anybody to resist change. Even the little things can really jostle users when they log in and are just trying to complete a, a small task. So we want to respect that and communicate about these changes early uh, to make sure that we can kind of breed um, trust with you. We get used to how things work, where we are and where things are located. And we want to build um, we want you to build routines on them so we promise not to uh, change too many things too fast or without advance notice as well uh, we want to make sure that we're preparing for that arrival you know you and, and you are prepared for when that happens um, so that's why we're doing these kinds of webinars and we'll be uh, you know notifying you of what those changes are ahead of time um, and having still the early access period where you can play with it and doing some of that customer testing to really bring some uh, champions in. So communicating about project changes really serves two purposes. Uh, we want to encourage discovery and impart value early on. We want to get all of our users excited to check things out by explaining what's in it for you all and um, making it easy to find and get Get started. So that's what a lot of these webinar contents and the, the promotional materials that we'll start rolling out. Um, also, we recognize that you might be running on autopilot and not notice or appreciate a big feature uh, change that makes your life easier. So we'll um, definitely be giving a lot more information about how you can find those um, and use it to your advantage to navigate and uh, use the platform more effectively. Uh, once you're familiar with the products, you're like unlikely really to do much unprompted exploring. So we'll help you out there. Um, in addition to that, jumpstarting the adoption of the platform, we aren't really making these changes for fun. While it's nice and uh, fun to play with the designs, we want to make sure that we're moving the needle on any goals and sparking growth uh, that you might have and how Yext is really bringing value to your day to day. Uh, so an effective communication really um, plan can really help um, create excitement and demand and anticipation before even engaging with those functionalities. And we want to have some uh, champions there. And then we always know that there will be some, um, you know, people who have opinions about uh, and, and are skeptical about the changes that we do. And we, we want to make sure that their happiness is in, uh, important. Um, we're in a position to preview some of these changes with our customers in a controlled testing environment. So if you happen to fall into this bucket or, or want to be uh, somebody who is a steer, on the steering committee with those opinions, I would, I would welcome you to come and talk to us about that. Uh, this gives us a chance to course correct if there's some plan changes that are gonna really go over like a lead balloon uh, with our user base. Uh, you have a different perspective and all of these uh, folks who have um, a skeptical point of view really help us be better product designers. 
Um, I also think it's respectful for us to acknowledge when we heard that there are problems and that we are uh, pairing up and communicating a change that's addressing that. So with that, I will pass it back to Curtis. Awesome. All right. Um, so before we jump into questions, um, I do just want to give a bit of a plug for what's coming going on with the Hitchhikers community. Um, so we do have a few more webinars coming up this month and the one following. Um, some of those include uh, information about our algorithm updates, posting, answers React components, Google business profile best practices, search merchandiser, connectors enhancements, um, and more. Um, so feel free to check out those. As always, we have um, our regular office hours for anybody to uh, you know, get a chance to talk with our Hitchhikers team and have their questions answered. Um, and then we will also want to just plug our ideas board. If you have any feedback about the platform or anything else that we discussed today, this is a great place to share that feedback. Um, and we will be paying a close, we'll be paying close attention um, and really seriously take uh, any feedback we have and, and use it for further improvements down the line. Um, so with that, we are going to take some time for Q&A. So I'm going to take a peek at any questions that have come up um, and, and we'll get started answering them. Um, all right. So um, I, I see we have uh, one, one question coming in, uh, coming in first about uh, not being able to see the new layout. So this does raise a good point. Um, when it when it comes to having the new navigation and home screens um, in your X account, you need to activate a feature flag in the admin settings uh, to make this uh, to make them active uh, in your current account. Um, and so that requires um, just a few clicks on on the user's end, um, and then and then it'll be active. This has been the case since our early release, our early access earlier this month. Um, I bolt on, yeah, oh. can I bolt on another a little bit? The the feature fat flag for the um, new navigation is called Spring 22 New Platform Navigation Early Access. It encompasses the new navigation, favorites, and the WCAG colors come for free with that flag turned on. Separately, there's also another WCAG color contrast flag that uh, will have the colors for anyone who wants to turn on the colors and see what that looks like first, but not turn on the navigation yet. Um, it, at our general access on May 11th, everybody will get the new navigation turned on, um, but it uh, will also be managed through a feature flag if you uh, need to turn it off for a period of time. Um, at some point, we will have a, a full cutover where both navigations won't be available. I know that there's some customers out there who need to update their internal documentation materials and need a little bit of extra time uh, before they can turn that on for their whole account. Um, so that's what we're trying to add the buffer there. But that is the feature flag that uh, you would need to go in and turn that on. Great. Thank you. Um, let's see. What is another question? We actually have a handful here. Um, so this, this might be a good question for you, Aaron. Mm -hmm. um, but so somebody asked, um, the new side panel looks great. So kudos, Aaron and the team. Um, is there any plan to introduce a dark mode DX so that the rest of the page can be dark as well? Yeah, good question. So a lot of what I was saying with uh, pulling in the branding and doing a lot of cascading changes throughout the rest of the platform, a part of what we will be looking into is um, a color uh, strategy and dark is not off the table. I think that that's a, an option that a lot of people offer in their platform. At, at the heart of that, what we will keep in mind is legibility and making sure that uh, the contrast is not going to hurt users' eyes when they're in the platform doing endur endurance-based tasks. So uh, we'll want to make sure that keep the usability at the center of all of that and not just do the dark mode because it's cool and everybody else is doing it. Uh, so that's that's kind of our philosophy of pursuing the dark mode. Makes sense. Uh, thanks. All right, let's, uh, let's keep going here. So we also had a question, are home screens optional or are they now always visible? 
Um, so that's a good question. So right now, um, as with the early access period that we're currently in, home screens are optional. They're something that need to be turned on via feature flags, as Aaron was discussing before. Um, come our uh, general access period, or rather general availability, um, they will then be defaulted into our users' accounts. But that is, it is worth saying that any user that would not like to have this in their account would be able to um, go to their configuration and, and hide it from their account if for some reason um, they, they'd rather not have this new built-in home screen. Um, so in, su in summation here, um, they will be kind of the default going forward, uh, but there's flexibility to take it away if that's desired. One thing to add there, Curtis, is that if our consulting team has built a custom dashboard for an account, that will be the, the first thing that a uh, user will see when they log in as well. Yes, great, great call out, Nick, thanks. Um, awesome. So will there be, this is another question here, will there be any training materials for our users? Um, this, this, this user um, has a lot of users and so, it matters to them that they can communicate these updates to the whole team. Um, and I think a quick answer is, you know, we're always working on, on making it as easy as possible to uh, teach people the best practices, um, tips and tricks for using our platform. Uh, we'll have a blog post coming soon that will provide more detail, um, but our team is, is definitely geared and ready to create any additional content um, that'd be helpful for our community. Nick, do you have any, any additional thoughts on uh, where we might be looking to add content? Yeah, I, I think our documentation team has a, a full strategy around the, the new navigation. Aaron, you actually may have some, some color commentary there. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to do anything that will help make this adaption um, or adaptation to the new uh, platform easier if that's a uh, Loom video, a walkthrough that we put up on YouTube, if it's a blog post, if there's like one sheeters, I see some requests for like copy and paste, like highlights of what we want to do. Obviously, there's going to be a recording of this webinar, but it's, you know, longer if there's a more expedited version, um, we can take that anatomy slide that I had before and maybe uh, blow it out and give kind of like an extra instructional walkthrough. Um, a lot of what we uh, tried to preserve in this version of the navigation is a close one to one with the architect information architecture of what you see in the navigation today just repivoted into a vertical configuration and that is the transition state that uh, we wanted to make sure everybody had to adjust to the um, visual orientation and then we'll kind of over time change the information architecture to kind of blend things together a little bit more uh, for what you're looking and finding but that's um, that I'm happy to help with whatever we need if it's a hyper real yeah you just send me ideas I'm happy to do whatever <laughs> great thank you um, we have another question um, I th that I think deals with some of our um, partners' responsibilities, managing you know many accounts at once. Um, question was, does every single user in an account have to turn on the feature flag or can a super admin turn it on for everyone for the whole account at once? Um, and the quick answer there is, is yes, you will have the uh, capabilities to manage uh, you know whether whether it's a, a partner specific, situation or not, you will have the capabilities to, you know, administratively turn this on for all EX accounts that one manages um, in bulk. And so um, we're, we're happy to receive any follow-up questions uh, that are kind of more specific to an individual there. Um, but in short, that is absolutely something that will be um, possible as we're all making this transition through, um, through the push until general availability. I have one more comment there. What, one of the things that we have right now that we didn't have before because we needed it for user testing is the ability to turn on feature flags at a test user account level um, and not for the entire account. So uh, we could potentially um, expand that also to some of our partner orgs if you want to do it for internal, uh, like an internal uh, person who's in charge of documentation, for instance, before you want to turn it on to the entire account, if they want to have early access, 
uh, to go in and grab a lot of the screenshots with the new navigation on to update documentation, we can um, provision just that uh, test user to have the navigation turned on before the whole entire account uh, comes online with it. Great. Uh, thank you, Erin. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and, and I'll say, everybody, uh, you know, if you have any further questions, you know, please feel free to keep them coming. Um, we have a few more here that, that we're ready to address. Um, so first what I'm seeing is, you know, will there be a, a workshop to explore the new interface? Um, something, something that's more operational to understand um, how you make the most of it. Um, that is that is a great question. Um, I guess I, I would also, you know, be curious if if there are any like more specific questions that we could receive, we'd be happy to kind of show that in the platform. Um, but generally speaking, we are happy to follow up with any further guidance, um, demo videos, whatever is necessary to make this transition um, easy and uh, and really helpful for you know all of our users. Um, so I'll kind of leave it at that and um, move on to uh, some more questions here. Um, <laughs> we, this is, you know, maybe I guess I'll say it, but Aaron, apparently both of us have nice speaking voices. So side career in radio or some other yeah. voice talent. I've always wanted to voice the cartoon character. Maybe that'll be. Yeah. Well, I mean, you've been doing a great job with product design, so I'm not really quick to uh, encourage you to do anything different. <laughs> but um, that comment is appreciated. Thank you very much, listener. Um, and let's see. Um, so it looks like right now we are um, we are kind of near. Uh, yeah, we're kind of near nearing out our questions. Uh, uh, there are some questions about turning on feature flags which I'm happy to voice over um, for the sake of our listeners right now. Um, so an easy way to get started, and, and I'll actually plug one of our new uh, or one of our upgraded functionalities here is using QuickFind. Um, you can search for account features. Um, and there, if you scroll to early access features, um, you'll find the home screen and new platform navigation um, where you can then access those feature flags and, um, and start to use all of the great work that our UX team has put together for us. Um, so we wanna say thank you so much to everybody. Um, this is, uh, I think, a great time for us to wrap up. We appreciate the great questions, the participation um, and the attendance in general. Um, so. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Aaron, and, and all of you for joining.